Hello, hello, this is Casey from the iLog channel, and welcome back to my Minecraft survival series. In this episode, we're taking a bit of a break still from the castle to work on that extra special build that I started on at the end of the last episode. That's right, we're building us a TARDIS interior to go with that lovely little exterior out behind the castle. I have most of the resources I need gathered up, but I do think there's a couple more things I need. If I don't have any extra lying around, which I don't, I'm going to need some extra hoppers. Man, uh, my iron supply is uh, getting quite low. I'll have to go do some more uh, mining at some point, but I'm going to head back over to the castle or behind the castle, and we can start digging out the uh, side of that mountain to fit the interior behind the police box. And we approach. All right, so the, oh. Oh, I forgot I had a bunch of hoppers, whoops. Well, I'm definitely gonna need more iron anyway. But first things first, Let's make sure it's daytime. And uh, I think I've figured roughly 20, 21 by 21 square with maybe 10 blocks of height. Um, it's going to be a little tricky accounting for this uh, slope here. But since most of the extra height is needed for the redstone up top, I should be able to get away with leaving this part of the mountain intact there. All right, so coming in, it's a center block and then 10 blocks out either side should give us 21. Um, I realized I can't dig out <laughs> some of these blocks here because leads outside. So I'm thinking maybe this were, could be where the gap for some kind of interior door could be, or I'll have to figure out some way of covering this up. I don't want to bring in these dirt blocks though to cover up these parts of the wall because I want to leave as much of the actual exterior box part uh, exposed as I can. So I'll have to figure out something uh, something interesting to do with that. Hey, well, this solves some of my uh, iron woes. <laughs> Didn't even have to go strip mining. It was just ready and waiting there for me. All right, that's the uh, main area dug out. Now I just have to, or at least that's the width and length dug out. Now I just have to do the uh, height. So a gravel patch over here made uh, part of that job easy. <laughs> All right, so after digging out the area, I've started working on sketching out the uh, general shape of the interior and working out the uh, wall design. So if we take a look at it here, I've decided to go for kind of a classic TARDIS uh, roundels type design and I've got uh, redstone lamps behind all these stair blocks to provide some light and I'm going to use polished uh, deep slate that's what that is <laughs> on the floor um, and obviously I dug out way more area than I needed but this is good because there's going to be some redstone uh, going along to the center uh, console area as well as I may add in like a wall a uh, bit of redstone on the side. Um, I experimented with trying to get a uh, one by two piston door in this area. So it would be like, you'd come to the back here, it would just be like a wall and then it would open and you'd come into here. But unfortunately there's just no room to do it, especially with all the redstone needed to um, turn the lamps on. So, not really an option there, but, you know, I think this will work just fine as it is. Oh, and for the ceiling, I'm using uh, cut copper slabs. Um, I'm going to let them fully oxidize because I want them to be blue. So, all right, so now I'm just starting to work out where I want the uh, redstone to run 
for the uh, central time rotor. It's gonna have to come down around through here, channeled under the floor, like this. And actually probably back a little more because the wall is gonna be here and then it's going to be redstone lamps, and I don't want the redstone lamps to uh, interfere with anything else. Oh, and I think I need a second channel of redstone. Let's see, where do I want that lever to be? And I've just placed in a layer of where the redstone lamps are going to end up. That way I uh, know where the redstone can and can't go. And it looks like so far I'm in the clear. And if you're curious about how I'm lighting these, I'm doing a, an uh, alternating lever pattern of one on the top, one on the bottom, spaced every block. Seems to work in making sure everything is lit up. Hey, there we go. <laughs> now it's super bright in here. And so then this lever is going into a signal inverter down here, just a basic torch inverter. And that's going and turns on and off this uh, etho hopper clock, which is set to a three item uh, delay. And then I have the hopper clock going into another inverter, as well as this is going to be a uh, torch elevator there we go to get the signal up here and that way there'll be the same signal on both sides and just as a basic proof of concept you can see flick the lever and this piston will start pulsing on and off now I have a repeater here set to four ticks and then there's another repeater here just at one tick so that's there's a total of five ticks of delay on that piston because the piston up top when we account for the delay added in by this torch tower and then the um extra delay caused by it because i think there's going to be another repeater up here uh, that keeps them even so the pistons will be timed in a way where they're going in and out at the same time now i'm just getting the uh roof in so I can actually put the redstone on top of the roof. Here's a weird thing I just noticed though. The side of the cut copper slab is unaligned. Like the little center grid line there does not line up. That is so strange. Alright, so I had to do a little bit of uh, finagling from how this looked in my original test world. Let me just fill in this redstone here. There we are. Um, so up here we have the torch tower. I had to reposition it um, down a couple blocks because in my test world it was at a different height than how it was here and so to get the right alignment and height I had to lower it down a couple blocks which means there are now three repeaters here just to stop this redstone from linking with this one. So I took the delay down from four ticks to two ticks on this repeater, but then I had to bring it back up to three because I ended up needing an extra repeater on this redstone line to keep the signal strength up. And then there's another repeater here so the redstone doesn't interact with the redstone lamp line. But other than that, the uh, it's a pretty simple system, right? That lever activates or inverts the signal, turns off that redstone, etho hopper clock activates. When the redstone block is in that position, it sends out a signal to this chain of redstone, which will turn off the torch at the bottom down there, which will cause this signal to turn off and lower that piston and then it'll come up and do the same thing here, turn off that torch. It'll turn off a repeater on a four tick delay, go into another four tick delay, and that's what does the redstone lamps, each of which has a four tick delay between to create a sort of 
kind of spinning effect. And then there's just two uh, one tick delay repeater. So two ticks of delay here. Um, and this gets turned off. So the piston retracts. So if we look at it. This is the final effect. It looks pretty good. And then I have it set up so that when this lever is active and the hopper clock is turned off, this piston is activated, which uh, makes sure that the uh, end rods there, which I have as the time rotor, will always be in a closed position. Um, because this will always be deactivated when this is activated. Um, that way you don't end up with like a weird scenario where you flip the lever and it just ends up open and looks hollow and weird. So then I just have to build out the console around it, which is going to require some quartz slabs. All right, and now this has to go in here. I think this needs to be a slab there, yeah. And that'll stop the, uh, or that'll allow the redstone line to go down there. There we are. And then this top section is just gonna be stairs around there. And there we go. So we get some spinning light action, some time rotor movement. I think that looks pretty good. And this is my process for uh, placing in all the stairs. It's just, you know, putting in regular stair blocks and inverted stair blocks, just in an alternating pattern. There we go. And then going down in there, 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 and there. And those are gonna be quartz blocks, which I don't have any, let me grab some. Probably need more stairs. Hello, Enderman. Goodbye, Enderman. <laughs> Let's see here. There we go. And then I just have to go in, put the stairs up here. And I also need blocks of quartz behind there. Let me see what the best way up here is. Okay, I'll just have to pillar up. There we go. And that is a wall, full wall complete. Okay, and this time I put the extra quartz blocks in first. And so it should just be like this. And then... that and there we go with those last couple blocks placed in we have a completed interior the only other thing i need is to just add some more detail to the console add some extra buttons and levers and random whatnots i had thought about adding a little um opening wall scanner thing but i don't really know how the redstone for that would work without uh, interfering with the redstone with the lamps and having the pistons there. So I think I'm gonna not do that. All right, so I got some more redstone doodads to put around. Let's see how that should go there. And then I've also got a painting here. Oops. Nope, let's see. I didn't know you could put levers in front of paintings like that. Okay, let's 
break that. Let's see, what's the what's the best option for a scanner? There we go, and let's do one more button. Or actually, maybe a um Hmm. Actually I'll bring this lever in like that. Button there. And then I think I'll leave this spot open. All right, and with that, the TARDIS is complete. Let's do a little walkthrough here. So, you got the nice police box outside. Open the door, go in. Controls of various things. Got a scanner. All that stuff. Super fun. Roundels on the walls. Quartz pillars and all that. Yeah, this is great. I'm really uh, happy with how this turned out. And then, boom. Dematerializing. <laughs> nice. And I'm glad I can finally take this off my to-do list of things I planned for this world. <laughs> And with that project done, I think that's going to be it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, uh, click that like button because it really helps out the channel. And if you want to see more of this series, click that subscribe button and check the notification bell. That way you'll get notified every time I upload a new episode. And with all that, I'm Casey from the iLog channel, and this is me signing out. Bye now. <laughs>